Kelsey with Shipwreck Beads. How are you doing today? I am doing great. I'm going to just kind of ramble for a few minutes until we get some viewers on here. Um, so today I thought we'd take a few moments to talk about um, commercial leather findings and some of the things that you can get on the market. Um, we did a project last week where we used wire to um, as a connector for leather and so um, while those handmade touches are nice, sometimes you want to go with a more commercial finding, especially if you're mass producing things. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that today. Um, so here we are. We made it to Wednesday. Got my coffee in hand. We were really lucky. We got some snacks in the break room today. And who doesn't love donuts, especially on a Wednesday? It's a great pick-me-up. Um, the sun is shining. I mean, what more can you really ask for? I'm... Um, I'm happy it's Wednesday. It's a good day, right? <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, so I don't know how many of you watch uh, Candy Cooper's videos. I find her really inspiring. Um, and yesterday morning she posted um, just a quick little video about, um, you know, bring how, how things have been kind of tough out in the world lately and you know, we can do whatever we can do to sort of spread love and light. And she uh, mentioned some things that she keeps with her, sort of good luck tokens that she keeps with her all the time. And I wanted to share my my most prized possession, my, my little good luck token. And that's this little handprint here. Um, it's made out of PMC clay, which is uh, 0.99 silver um, clay that you can work with. My mother-in-law made this for me when my daughter was born, when we were in the hospital, and she surprised it with, surprised me with it. And so that's her little handprint from when she was born. And she's 10 now, so her hands are much, much bigger than this. Um, but it's just something that I keep with me. And, um, you know, one of the things that Candy talked about was just using, you know, your, what you can to spread, um, love and light in the world and, and, I think that by gathering here and, and doing this, we can make some pretty things and, and bring some of that beauty into the world. So, um, yeah. Hi, Jason from Sillitz, Oregon. We're glad that you love our store. Actually, I was, I was running down in the uh, showroom earlier to pull some stuff for this um, little video and ran into a customer who was all the way up here from California. And when he, he was talking to me and asking some questions and said that it he's never seen a bead store like our store. Um, it's really incredible. I think, you know, we, we call ourselves the world's largest selection of beads, but really that's just words. Um, and until you walk into the store and see it for the first time, you don't really realize what that means. Um, so he, he was just like, I can't wait to get back home and tell my friends about this. And so he, he was pretty excited to do some shopping. He, he does some bone and um, cross necklaces, very Southwestern inspired. And um, oh, look at all the hearts on the screen. I love it. Um, so these are our showroom trays. So whenever you uh, come shopping in our store, if you ever get the chance to, um, when you come in the front door, you'll be greeted by some wonderful people working in what we call our cove. Um, you know, shipwreck beads are pretty big on the nautical puns. So we've got our co our treasure cove where we've got more of our high end gemstones. We've got our galley, which is where we get you know where our our little coffee and and sandwich cafe is. Um, so yeah, so you get these trays, and you also get these itty bitty little sheets of paper and pencils. And so all of our product that comes loose, you actually have to write the item number and the quantity on there. Um, and that's how we keep track, and that's how we ring you out. Um, and then also our packaged items come with, you know, barcodes and stuff. So that makes it easy. Um, but that's just a little little thing about our store. All right, so let's go ahead and start uh, making something, right? So I'm going to go ahead and angle you down so you can see what I'm doing. Sorry for the shaking. All right. So I pulled a number of different leather find So many hearts. Oh, I love you all too. Okay, so I pulled a number of different commercial findings that we'll just kind of talk about. Um, some are more decorative. Some are more basic. Um, I'll show you some of the, the basic ones first. These little guys are little spring end leather connectors. Um, so you can kind of see it's a coil. And so one of the coils kind of, you can see how it ends there. So you stick your 
leather in there. And I'm using my gun handle grip pliers today. Love these. Um, and then what you do is you're going to pinch down that last coil over your leather and you really want to pinch it in there hard. And then I like to give it a good tug and make sure that's not going to go anywhere. Scissors, scissors, scissors. There's scissors. So I remember when I was younger I used to make a lot of necklaces with these. Um, I would put pendants on it. They're really simple to just whip up a whole bunch of them. So if you do sell, you know, make pendants and sell and want something a little different to put your finished pendant on that's still a little bit, um, you know, still has a handmade touch and ha is a little bit different than just putting it on chain or putting it on a piece of string or something. So that's how you use the coil end connectors. And then you just connect your jump ring and clasp to the little loop there. And that makes a just a nice leather strand. I'm not going to show you how to put the clasp on because I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Oh, I was hoping this would come on there. Okay. So that's a good way to use those little leather connectors. Um, I do believe we have these in two different sizes. So if you're using a larger gauge, then, um, or a larger, not gauge, larger diameter leather, then you can use a larger connector. So for just real basic pieces, something that you're just throwing a pendant on, um, I play, I've play. i played softball my entire life, including when I was younger, and I still play now. Um, I actually have a softball game tonight. It's our uh, rec league. Um, are these? I can't tell if the comments are frozen or not. The last comment I have here is from Chris Hake, Hake Mattingly from Alabama. Can someone give me a comment and see if this is working or not? I don't know. All right, anyway, so that's those leather findings there. And now we've got the fold over and leather endings, which, oh, hi, Katara. It looks like our comments are working. Okay, you guys are just quiet today. So these are the little leather end findings. They're kind of U-shaped, and you can see they've got a little, like, tongue or pokey thing, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what, the, what you'd call that. But it also has a loop on it. So this is also for ending leather. Um, see, I grabbed sort of my whole leather stash that I have in my office. So I've got a couple different colors to choose from. Hi, Michelle. How are you today? All right. So this one I'm going to use this size, but I'm going to double up on my one millimeter leather. Um, so kind of the trick is to just overlap it with the loop just slightly and I use my thumbnail to sort of hold it in place. This is kind of, these are kind of tricky to get to use. I always end up smashing my finger or something. Hi Julia from Ohio. All right, so all you do is you fold one side over and you really want to press in nice and tight. I love the colored leather too. We have a really great selection in both the one millimeter and two millimeter. Um, and I'm going to show you this one. We're, I'm going to show you the next connector I have. We're going to use this color here. It's like a pearly mint color and it is gorgeous. I love it. I'm actually wearing a bracelet today that I made using that leather and some tiara cast components. But I just love that pearly mint leather. So anyways, with the leather connectors, you're going to fold one side over and then you're going to fold over the opposite side and really smash it down. And again, I always give it a tug. You can always um, add glue to it. Um, the glue, glue's kind of, it used to be a dirty word when I first started beading. Nobody used glue and now, you know, if you can just add a little extra security to your piece by adding some glue to it, and no one's ever going to know the difference, then you should do that because, but see, that's nice and flat. These connectors also work really good on ribbon. Um, the silk ribbon that we have, they work well on that. They also work well on um, feathers. They work nicely on that too. So this, again, really pretty, pearly. 
mint leather. I love this coppery bronze color leather too. Look how gorgeous that is. Let's see, I also have just leather and brown. I didn't pull any black leather. All right, so then we've got these itty bitty baby guys. These are the same fold over end clasps or end connectors for leather, but they're just itty bitty. So for they be used for one millimeter leather if you're not doubling up on it. Um, and again, you just fold one side over. Where do you get the round type leather? Um, most of the leather cording that we have is, Wendy, um, most of the leather cording we have is rounded. Um, we do also carry leather lace, which is, or suede lace, which is flat. Um, so you just have to, to look, all of our, pic, all of our um, product is um, photographed, so it should be able to tell what's round and what's not. And if you aren't sure, then just shoot us a, an email or send us a, a message on Facebook and we're always happy to answer any um, product questions that you have. Um, oh, and this one just, oh, these little guys are so hard to work with. <laughs> I can't see it. Oh, all right, well that's not, Let's try this again. I think this leather might be just a tad too thin for these itty bitty baby connectors. But I think you get the idea as far as how how they're used. Um, some other little leather connectors that I got that I pulled that I thought are pretty cool. Um, this little piece here. It's an end connector, and this one, this is the one that you definitely want to use glue on. So we'll just take this and make a quick little leather necklace, I guess. So we'll see how many. Woo. I think we'll probably be able to get about four strands in there. So way too much. See, this is a problem when you don't measure things like you should. <laughs> but you should know me by now. I don't measure anything. It's not the most economical way to go about things. So. All right. So these ones you most definitely want to use glue with. Um, any type of glue will work. I like the E6000, but I'm going to use... Mm, Oh, I just stabbed myself with the scissors. Ouch. Ooh. But today I'm gonna use the GS Hypo Cement because it's got a really fine tip on there and I wanna get really into the hole of that. So you're just gonna add some glue. Make sure all of your ends line up. Just shove them in there. Ooh. And then it's a good idea to wait till the glue dries before you actually pinch it down. But I'm not going to wait for that. <laughs> um, but it can cause the glue to kind of seep out. Then you just sort of crimp the ends down and it gives you a nice tight connection. Let me go ahead and finish up the other side. Trying to reconnect. Are we back? Do I need a band-aid? I have some band-aids. I think I'll be okay. <laughs> uh, I haven't had a beating related injury in a while, so my band-aids are buried. All right, here we go. So look at that. Look at how much I'm bleeding right now. <laughs> 
I really got myself really good with the scissors. Oh, live video. My connection is still weak. I hope I don't lose you guys. Okay. Oh, brother. There we go. Now I won't bleed on the beads. Oh, sorry about that. All right. So sometimes when I'm bored, I just wire wrap random rocks. So that's what I'm going to stick on this leather here. Just something really, really simple. actually have like pretty much a full first aid kit in my desk drawer because um, I'm not gonna lie these injuries tend to happen to me more often than they probably should I'm pretty clumsy I tend to wake up with random bruises that I don't really know what they are or where they're from um, so so yeah I keep a full <laughs> a full first aid kit in my desk otherwise bad news so that's how to use these ones. And we do have these caps, and I think they're really pretty, that are just the cap and not a clasp. Um, and that's what I used here on... Katara says she's not the only one. Oh, knotty knolls are the worst. Um, when I'm in shipping, I'm always scared I'm going to stab myself. So, that's, so here's that same like little crown flower connector piece. Um, and then here is the class piece. And again, I just sort of added a charm. And leather, as you when you first take it off the spool, can be kind of, you can see, like, wiggly. <laughs> so it does take some wearing or if you, you know, get it a little wet, but not too, too wet. Just enough to sort of, like, relax those. And as you wear it, it will, uh... yeah, the leather knots really well. Um... With the thinner, like the one millimeter leather, leather, Danielle, you when you knot it, you want to be careful not to over knot it, um, like pull it too hard because I have had it snap on me because I'm the Hulk and I'm that strong. No, it's just it's just thin. But you can see here I've used knots and it knots pretty easily. And I just posted a blog post on our store blog um, for these stacking bracelets, and so that's what we're going to finish up by making sort of one of these today. And um, you can see, oh, I'm wearing it. <laughs> this one also knots. So it knots pretty well. Um, so all right. So we're going to go ahead and finish up with one last little project that's a real simple one using the Tierra Cast components. Um, they make some really great leather, um, leather components and, and um, glue-in end caps. All of their stuff is, is just so well made and I and right now it's on sale on our website 25% off so um, until tomorrow all t all TR cast is on sale um, so we'll go ahead and do this so this is sort of the little bracelet we're gonna make really super simple so we're gonna start by using this nifty tool it's called a bracelet bending tool or bracelet bender bar I'm not sure exactly what we call it um, but as you can see it's got a rounded Sort of flat so this will take a flat piece and make it rounded to be able to fit on for a bracelet because when you're wearing a bracelet you don't want it to be flat especially a long piece like that it's not going to fit or be very comfortable to wear so what we'll do is we're going to take the bracelet bending tool and just very very gently go through the length of the piece and bend it into a rounded shape so you go from this to this. And this will work on most soft metals. Um, you, it'll work great on the TR cast pieces. It'll work great on the Vintage. Um, some components you might want to experiment with before using um, because the metals can be, some metals are brittler than others and they won't always um, bend as easily. So I'm gonna move that to this one. Okay, so I've got my two pieces my bracelet bender this tool I was so excited to get this tool in because I've been wanting this tool for a while um, you can always just gently bend it with your fingers or with pliers but this gives you a nice uniform curve that's just perfect for bracelets 
Okay, so go ahead and probably should measure this. You guys know how I love to measure. <laughs> All right, so we'll just go about. It's about 11 inches that I'm cutting here, and we can always see later on and make sure if that's the right length or not. Um, I'm going to go ahead and actually reverse this. So on this one, I've got the leather coming off, um, I guess, the end of the bar. I'm going to try it on the other side because I'm going to try and put this on. It's not quite positioned right. So um, we'll see if reversing it makes a difference. So we're going to put the leather through until it's halfway like that. I'm going to take one of these um, hammered barrels with the large hole. These are also by Tiercast. Again, Tiercast is all on sale right now for 25% off. Um, seed beads are also 25% off and Swarovski is 30% off. So um, take advantage of those sales. They won't last much longer. So I'm putting the spacer about an inch away from the bar just because I like the way the leather curves like that and I want my leather to be lined up next to each other. Um, now you can take your pliers and just sort of flatten that kind of like a crimp bead but I'm going to add a little bit of glue um, just to make sure that stays in place but I'm going to crimp it and glue it so. So I put the glue where I want my crimp or my bead to sit. I really want to make sure it's all facing the right direction. And then I'm going to take my flat nose pliers and I'm just going to sort of press there. So between the glue and the crimping, that should stay put. Okay. And so now my leather's kind of wonky, so I'm just kind of going to work it with my fingers to get it all to um, curve right. Okay. My leather ends aren't quite even, so I'm going to even this up. And I'm going to take... Uh, one of these caps. I'm going to put some glue into the end. Do you want to put a, a good amount? but you don't want too much that it's going to come squishing out once you stick the leather in. Um, and then I also usually give my cap kind of a turn and kind of put the glue along the edge of the cap as well. So then you just stick that in. You want to make sure again that your leather is facing all the right direction and that You kind of work with the curve of the leather. We're just going to let that one set up for a few minutes and then I'm going to do that, this other one real quick. GS Hypo Cement isn't one of the most uh, quick drying glues, um, but sometimes I almost like the ones that take a little bit longer to dry because you have a little more working time with them. Um, I am trying to use more super glue on certain projects because it just works better, but it's so messy and I have such a hard time with it. So I tend to usually go with the GS Hypo Cement or the E6000. Um, Oh, good. Shirley, I love the feedback. Thanks for sh um, for chiming in. We hope to be doing more of this these types of videos and instructionals and, and whatnot. So if you've got any ideas or suggestions for what you want our next video to be on, we'd love to hear about it. So, you know, share with us in the comments um, because we, we love your feedback. We love to hear from you. Um, yeah.
One thing also to consider when you're gluing it in place is which direction the hole on your cap is facing. Because that might make a difference depending on what kind of clasp you're using or... Um, oh, Randy says E6000 is amazing stuff and I completely agree. We'll let that one. S oh no, it's falling apart. Stay. All right, we'll see if this one's dry enough to work with. Normally, you'd want to let it set up completely before you um, try and work with it, but I really just want to finish this, and now I can't find my jumpers, which I know I have some point or another. Where on earth did my jet rings go? Well, all right then. Okay. It's a great thing about having an office full of supplies. I just have everything right here. Ah. See, the glue's not set up enough. Maybe I just need to switch to the super glue after all. So you're going to put a jump ring on one end of the, the cap, then you're going to attach your jump ring. Remember with the jump rings, we always go from side to side, always like this, never like this. All right, well, I'm not gonna try and connect this clasp just because this cap is gonna fall off when I do. Um, but that sort of gives you an idea of what it's gonna look like. Um, okay. I'm not sure if it would make a difference either whether you put the clasp on the cap end or the, the, uh, the bar end. I guess it just kind of depends on how you want your finished piece to look. So that's another thing to play around with. Um, so hopefully that gave you, um, let me turn you back up here. All right, so what did everybody think about their lesson in leather findings? Good point about, yeah. Brandy, you gotta point out that with jump rings every time. Um, I've taught, a number of our beating 101 classes and it's amazing to me the people who think that oh I know how to do a jump ring and then you see them pulling it apart like that it's like no um, so it's one thing you can't stress enough is make sure with the jump rings got always 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 open them side to side um, and open them as little as possible because you don't want to work with the metal or we're overwork the metal so that it gets fragile and breaks on you um, that's always disappointing Ooh, I better close my glue up before it leaks all over the place The GSI post is so hard to, because you've got this little on the cap, so you've got this little needle that's got to go inside that little needle. Yeah, it's kind of hard. I'm about to give up on this GSI post cement glue forever. Oh, there we go. All right. It is, this stuff is really nice for getting into small areas. There we go, upside down. And I actually use it a lot for, um, like when you make the wrap bracelets, which would be a fun video to do soon. Um, so if you guys have any suggestions on upcoming videos that you'd like to see, please share those in the comments. And also I've got a winner to announce, actually two winners. Um, and so I will be sending you ladies a message if you're not watching. So Kathy Gard and Valerie Davis Warsham, you guys both won a kit, an earring kit from the video, we, our happy hour video that we did last Friday. So um, send a message to me or I'll send a message to you. We'll get you hooked up with um, 
with an earring kit. So, um, and hopefully you guys all tuned in on Friday afternoon with us. We made some really fun sparkly earrings. Um, and we will be back this Friday at 4 o'clock again for another, um, let's call them our happy half hour <laughs> uh, Friday videos. Um, and we'll do something sparkly and fun. Um, and again, keep an eye out on our Facebook page because we have been doing a lot of um, giveaways recently. We just did a giveaway. Um, the winner, this will be going out in the mail to Sue today. She got a great little combination of some fun stuff, coral and turquoise and some fun pendants. So keep an eye on our Facebook page and maybe you can be our next winner. We've got a lot of fun stuff going on. Um, one last thing, we are still looking for vendors for our artisan market. So if you are local and you want to share your handmade goods with us, we would love to hear from you. So send us an email to market at shipwreckbeads.com for more information. Um, thank you all for tuning in today and we'll see you again at four o'clock on Friday for our happy half hour. Have a nice day. Bye.